2023 livery tier list incoming all right there's gonna be some hot takes in here i'm sure we're gonna go in specifically car launch order all right in the I, I i said this up earlier it should be right it went haas red bull williams alfa romeo alfa tauri aston martin and mclaren went on the same day ferrari Merck, alpine this is the order that we're going to do things in this is the order that we're going to be regular we have s tier at the top we have actually hold on and then on the bottom tier we got straight garbo are you ready starting off with haas f1 new livery new driver lineup new everything i have the haas is you know it's not too bad I, I like this livery a lot more than last year's livery chat says it's a d i hard disagree the hot new haas car is a b b tier car b tier car for the haas you know what it is not perfect i fully admit that it is not a perfect car but at the same time i think it's a little more visually interesting I think it's definitely had room for improvement, but I think uh, having them go first, I think is kind of uh, diluted people's reactions to the livery itself. I think it's very good. There are definitely some hit and miss spots, but I think from that side profile, it redeems it 100%. And I will hear nothing about it because, and I'll mention this multiple times, this is my tier list. Maybe we'll do a chat tier list next. Who knows red bull the rb what are they up to now 19 whatever it is the rb 18 19 i don't even know you know you know why i don't know the difference because it's exactly the same as the last one it's exactly as the same as the car has been and honestly it is a good livery but at the same time it turns no heads in car reveal season because they made absolutely zero changes and for that simple fact the red bull is a c tier livery for me the red bull does look good but at the same time get a little creative with the red bull you won the constructors you won the drivers let's get a little creativity in there you know if you're gonna win the on-track stuff at least make an attempt to try and win the off-track stuff it's a c-tier livery make some changes get a little creative with it get a little creative with it come on that's all we're asking everyone sat through also if we're going to take into account um car reveal like ceremonies i should almost drop red bull down to a d tier if we're taking that into account as well i should move haas up well no haas is basically about the same haas just posted the the, the car on twitter they just, at the time they announced they were just like here it is they're it literally just posted it on twitter red bull spent an hour and a half to reveal a car that made no difference in a country that hasn't even really started paying attention until like the last couple of years so <coughs> c tier livery c tier car reveal actually it's probably a d tier car reveal it's a c tier livery for uh for red bull now the williams which had the perfect opportunity to see what red bull did and go i am going to smash that out of the water because not only did Williams look at their car from last year and go, we can we can make it better. We can do that. We can be creative while also making it better. They took the same general design and only made it better in my opinion. The Duracell battery on the airbox, genius level move. Not only is it perfect marketing for Duracell, most of Duracell batteries are black. And so they can get away with leaving that little section unpainted while also making their sponsor, I'm sure, extremely happy. I love the way the car faded now. For instead of just kind of being blue all over, it's more of a fade from the darker portions to the blue. And while I will fully admit that I am a blue biased boy, the Williams, the 2023 Williams is an A. Got a little cheeky there for a second. Tier list is trying to tell me something, but it's an A tier car. 
it's an a tier car for me i love and will fully admit that i am a million percent a sucker for blue liveries and i think that it is choice i love that they stuck with the blue i think they only made it look better from last year and i think williams has only been on an upward trajectory when it comes to car liveries and as much as tier list wants me to make it an s tier car there's only a select few that are going to make it to s tier and williams while close didn't quite hit the full full punch in the gut that's an s tier car for me that said the next car the alfa romeo i think everyone i think everyone was slightly surprised by the alfa romeo purely based on the fact that no one was really expecting much i think after the first few releases i think people were kind of just waiting they were waiting for that one car to come in and over the top right hander bang knock everyone out i think this alfa romeo is stunning and i think of the first four cars i think it's definitely the best looking basically just because it's really hard to make red and black not go together sure there are only minor tweaks and they really only took the white portions of last year's car and turned them black but there's just something about this car that hits absolutely differently that's why for the first time alfa romeo is an s tier car i think alfa is trying they, they successfully did what others were trying to do and kind of secretly what i was hoping haas would do which is to take their car get some weight saving by making things black but still make the car look absolutely banging it's an s tier car for me and we're gonna see the antithesis from this soon but alfa romeo the first on the top spot in the 2023 f1 tier list and coming up next alpha tauri now i will fully admit that i am much more of a fan of this alpha tauri than it seems like most of the internet is i love that they made the alpha tauri logo on the engine cover bigger i do love that i am not as huge a fan of the slight change in the colors of the um of the blue but I do enjoy that they made a little bit of, a, of an attempt. At least they're trying. And honestly, I actually am more of a fan of the red Orlin pops of red uh, on the car more than others. I'll also fully admit that. But at the same time, there's something about it that just doesn't, it doesn't work. You know, it, it, I, when you look, when I look, here's how I always come back to this. When I look at the individual components, I go, oh, I like the logo on the engine cover. I like the little spots of red. But when you actually take a step back and look at the car as a whole, there's just something about it that just doesn't, just doesn't click right. There's just something about it that just doesn't, co it doesn't work cohesively. And for that reason, also the nose cone, the straight on view is probably the worst angle of this car. And I think it's holding it back even worse than like the Haas front on view. And so for that reason, Alpha Tauri is a C tier livery. I do like the components, but at the same time, realistically, it's below Red Bull for me. But I don't know if it's, I don't know for me if it's really D tier. And maybe that's just me being a little too nice. But at the same time, I like the individual components. It's definitely the bottom of the list so far. But at the same time, I struggle. Maybe we'll, we'll I'll go back through all of them and see if I revisit any thoughts. But at the same, for right now, Alpha Tower is the lowest, but it's not quite the bottom list for me as of right now. Next. We'll go with Aston Martin first because Aston and McLaren did their launches at the same time. I know McLaren went first, but Aston's in the first list here. So Aston Martin, the new Aston Martin is, I'm just gonna do this first and then we'll talk about it. If there's going to be one car on this list for me to hit straight Garbo, for me personally, it's this year's Aston Martin mainly because for every issue that i had with red bull not making any changes aston martin somehow did the exact same thing but the change they did make which is changing the slight shade of green i didn't work for me 
it just didn't work for me. I don't know what it is. I know some people. I know some people enjoyed the new green. I did see some of that, but at the same time, there's just something about it that just didn't work for me. And it, you know, the the livery doesn't work when all of the discourse around it on launch day was about how all of the car physical car component changes versus the livery because everyone is looking forward to the livery first and then probably looking at the actual car components second i saw more discourse about how they changed 90 percent their so called i've seen of their aero uh their aero components over the fact that the car looks exactly the same and for some and for that reason it just Plus, it looked like they were holding it in like a business meeting full of people who just did not want to be there. And so for that reason, this Aston Martin is just straight garbo for me. I didn't like it when it was in, when it was released. I'm more interested to see how it performs on track more than the livery itself. And so for that reason, straight garbo right into the garbage. Get in the bin, Aston Martin. And as much as the British folks in my chat want to uh, say it's because it's British racing green and that he's offended and that i'm taking shots now nothing to do with it aston martin make yourself a good car maybe i'll warm up to the livery but for right now my immediate reaction was bottom of the list so far but that said we will move on to another british manufacturer the mclarens and this one is going to ruffle a lot of feathers because I know there are a lot of fans of this McLaren livery, mainly because it's hard to get much worse than it was a couple of years ago. But at the same time, I am a McLaren car enjoyer for the simple fact that I love colorful cars. This McLaren is above the Haas in B tier for me. I know that this car was a heavy proponent for people saying the inclusion of more black holding it back. I honestly really do like this car. I like it. I do. I think the extra black just helps accent the amount of colors on it truly are. And maybe this is just, you know, I'm a new F1 fan. This is literally my first off season as a fan, as I joined in the middle of the 2022 season. But at the same time, I've always been a fan of the McLaren. I love the orange, I love the blue. I do kind of, I will agree on some discourse online about the, uh, if you were to thin out the blue stripe along the side pod, um, it would look a lot better. But at the same time, the black accents, all they do is help make the other colors pop and i just i'm a big fan big fan all right now here's where we're going to have the discussion on the divide between the car reveal event and the car livery itself because we're going to talk about the scuderia ferrari who probably put on the best car reveal event of the year but at the same time, while a very good livery, not the best. I know Ferraris always look good, but, and here's where we're gonna nitpick even more and kind of go exactly the opposite of the McLaren way. The only thing keeping Ferrari off of the S tier line are a couple of bits of obvious weight shaving from paints specifically the blob of black around the shark fin and the blob of black you can see right in the middle of the side pod which i can't remember the exact sponsor but there's this black blob in the middle of the side pod for a little bit of, of weight saving around the uh the paints not going full full red along the entire side pod that said the car event was perfect ferrari absolutely nailed it in which they got a grandstand full of passionate ferrari fans and they let them go absolutely wild and then they did the one thing every f1 team should do which is put the dang car on track 
and drive it in circles for a couple of laps. You have no idea. The only thing any F1 fan wanted at this point in time was to see an F1 car go around in funny shaped circles. And they absolutely nailed it. It was, it gave me, literally gave me chills to hear that Ferrari fire up and then go around in, in circles. They, they purposefully had shots where there was no crowd noise and it was just the sound of a car going around on track. Oh, give it to me 10 times and car launch season is even better. But at the same time, while I love the livery, there are a couple of things holding it back. The biggest plus, I think, is putting the old school Ferrari over the back wing. Love that. I know they did it at Monza last year and they added it in, perm seems like, permanently. Oh, perfection. But that said, it's not an S tier car for me. I'm not even gonna beat around the bush around the next one. The black Mercedes, absolutely. Whoa. Actually, here's what I'm gonna do. Hold on. Because the new Mercedes. I'll even do this. Hold on. Oh, there. Oh, baby. Ah. Oh, the black Merc, the cream of the crop. Probably the only constructor who could get away with making their entire 99% of their car exposed carbon fiber, even though they didn't. They went ahead and did it, and it looks so good. It looks so good, and it looks so mean, and by God, it better be fast, or else they are going to get memed into oblivion online but that said the the patronus green stripe oh the little accents on the front and rear wing perfection the oh the only downs the only thing i'm gonna say is specifically for george russell's car where they made his driver number like neon green instead of his normal blue it's the only thing Lewis's neon yellow works wonderfully. It It is literally perfect. George, they put lime green for some reason. The only reason I could think of is that they're trying not to get his blue confused with like the Patronus green, blue, teal, blue. But at the same time, he's still running his blue hell. I don't know. That's literally the only thing that I have to nitpick. And since it's literally only on one of the two cars. And also, also, the all red underside to the rear wing for the Ineos sponsorship. Honestly, I mess with. Having an entirely exposed black all along the front. And you only get that big block of red under the rear wing i mess with that i'm not even gonna lie i think it's hot i made this joke on twitter but if i could be sexually attracted to a car it's close it really is it really is that merc better be fast because boy do i want to see it a lot on these broadcasts i don't want to hear nothing about it i said what i said i'm sticking by it but last and certainly not least we have Alpine, who decided to be 15 minutes late for their own car reveal, keep people waiting, just to pretty much give us the exact same livery that they had before, with just slightly more black woven in um, to break up the gap between the blue and the pink. Honestly, this car is pretty mid, in my opinion. The more, I, I originally saw it and I liked it because I'm a big fan of bright colorful liveries, hence the McLaren. But at the same time, while the McLaren looks a little more purposeful, it looks like they just kind of took away paint and made exposed carbon to just kind of save weight. And it doesn't really flow as well for me. I'm gonna put it as, as a B, mainly because I do enjoy colorful uh, colorful liveries. But uh, it's a B, B tier car for me. I think it gets the job done. It kind of fits in my mindset of all three of these cars, which are big fan, could have been better, could have been worse, so very middle of the road. And so for that reason, it's it's a B for me. And while it's not here, 
and I'm gonna have to remember to do this in post. Hopefully I do. I'm gonna include the pink, I'm gonna include the pink Alpine. The pink Alpine for me absolutely bangs. You thought I was only gonna have one car in S tier, you're wrong. My mouse right here. Future me, please, for the love of God, put it in. Please remember. Pink Alpine is an S tier car livery, and I wish they would just make it their entire their, their car livery. I wish the blue and pink would be their, their one-offs, and the all pink would just be it. The all pink is gorgeous. Are you kidding me? They rolled both of those things out, and I was disappointed that they only are gonna run it for the first three races. It is going to be fire. Imagine an all pink Alpine lining up next to all of these cars with all of their exposed carbon fiber and their dark colors. Literally put the Merc and the Alpine next to each other and you could not have two completely different cars. And so for that fact and that fact alone, the all pink version of the Alpine is an S tier, but it wasn't included on this list. So I'm gonna have to add it in post, but there it is my F1 2023 livery tier list. The Black Merc gets its own tier at the top. S tier, we have the Alfa Romeo and the all pink Alfa, uh, Alfa, the Alpine. For A tier, we have the Williams and the Ferrari. In B tier, we have the regular Alpine, the Haas McLaren. In C tier, we have the Red Bull sister teams of Red Bull and Alpha Tauri. And Straight Garbo, the only one down at the bottom, Aston Martin, there in the bottom tier. But what do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. And I cannot wait for this season to get underway. I'll see you guys in the next one.